Hey guys, Nick here, and truth be told, there's a fairly disquieting dictum in human exploration. While we often think nothing of going up, jetting through the skies, or launching humans thousands of miles into deep space, going down has always proven incredibly difficult. To this day, humans have only reached a depth of 7.6 miles into the Earth's surface, just 0.2% of the distance to its core. It's not that we don't want to go deeper, it's just that there aren't many viable options that can resist the extreme environments of Earth's core. Or are there? Let's find out. Okay, the very dry and perhaps even uninspiring answer to why we can't go deeper is that it gets very hot as you go down Earth's surface. The outermost shell of the planet increases temperature by 25 degrees Celsius per kilometer of depth. So once you're about 30 miles down, you're in temperatures in the range of 1200 to 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. Even worse, the Earth's core is theorized to be around 10,300 degrees Fahrenheit, which will pretty much vaporize any industrial material we can possibly use miles before it gets anywhere close to the core. Obviously, this is a great idea if you want to tap the Earth for geothermal heating and electricity, but it's a terrible idea for drilling. The drill bits we currently use churn through hard rock and get very hot via friction. Drill bit efficacy can be maintained at higher temperatures by using materials with very high melting points such as tungsten carbide and diamond, but there obviously exists an upper limit. In the case of the Kola Super Deep Borehole, drilling came to a halt at a recorded depth of 12,262 meters, about 7.62 miles. It took them 24 years and is still the world's deepest artificial hole. Now, why is everyone so obsessed with reaching the Earth's core? Well, for one, we know more about solar systems that are hundreds of light years away than we do about what's directly beneath our feet, so I guess our curiosity is pretty warranted. As of now, there are two proposed ways of getting down there. The first way is a self-sinking cobalt and tungsten capsule. The cobalt would be hot enough to melt the rock, while tungsten's extreme melting point of 6,150 degrees Fahrenheit would enable the capsule to withstand the temperature of the Earth's mantle. In the first year, the capsule would reach a depth of 20 kilometers, and by its 30th year, the 100 kilometer mark would be traversed. As the capsule descends, it would leave a wake of molten rock that would then re-solidify, creating sounds that could be monitored from the surface. These sounds would then tell us more about the composition of the layers that the capsule passes through, in theory providing a lot more information than our current methods of interrogating the Earth's interior. The other way is a gravity train, where we build the Earth equivalent of a space elevator. We basically carve two giant holes on either side of the Earth and build an elevator in between, but it's almost impossible for this idea to materialize because there's nothing on Earth that could withstand the pressure almost 3 million atmospheres or temperature of the Earth's core. But nonetheless, the idea of exploring our planet's interior has been the subject of renowned literature and intense scientific debate, so I definitely thought it was worth bringing up. Who knows, give it some time when we might finally see what our Earth's steps harbor. Until then, we'll just have to wait and see. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.